um, um, charitable organization. So we're able to, you know, we're keeping some of the money and we're using the money locally. We just had one of our girls on the list just had her five-year cancer-free anniversary and she lives out in San Diego and we sent her a giant thing of tulips to say like oh, five awesome. years is oh. massive. I mean that's the goal, right? Mm -hmm. Five years disease-free survival. So, so she was like thrilled to get them and you know we have some girls that are facing surgery soon and we're putting together you know all the knowledge all the names on this list are women that have had the surgery so we know you know you need the button-down pillows you need, you need the button-down pajamas and you need the right pillow and you need this and you need this kind of lotion and you need this kind of lip balm for your first day of chemo so we have these baskets ready to go for the women and it's really it's really nice to be able to you know do something like that for mm. for women that we know are facing this. That is, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a great. so those are the names. Great, so you're doing the walk this year. I am, I'm doing the walk. The walk is May 15th and 16th. Last year my husband Todd walked for me because I was strung out on chemo. Um, but this year I'm, I'm going to be walking and uh, I'm looking forward to it. And Barbara, you walked in the past. I have, I have did the marathon for leukemia and lymphoma, but who knew that I would be in the breast cancer situation. Yeah. Um, I actually got the information for the Avon walk, but I didn't pursue it for, I was in the middle of treatment myself, so I am yeah. not year. planning on it, but next year, next year, I can do it. Where do they <laughs> walk? Just, it the starts at UMass Boston, it starts at the JFK Library, and it goes, uh, they actually they change the route every year just a little bit for security purposes, mm -hmm. so I'm not really sure, I haven't seen the full route yet, but it's, you sleep overnight in Canton, so you walk from Boston to Canton, and then the, the, uh, uh, the walk back is a little more direct, but it ends back at uh, UMass Boston as well, so opening and closing ceremonies are at the JFK Library. Wow. So, yeah. Wow, and what does Avon do? do they, where does the money go to research mainly? Yeah, Avon has a lot of great affiliations. The biggest one is, um, well, in my mind, the biggest one is Genentech Bio, and Genentech Bio is the is the um, pharmaceutical company that was um, uh, that found Herceptin. Mm -hmm. They're the Herceptin is their baby, um, so I'm always glad to see money go to those super smart science mm -hmm. guys because they're always on the cutting edge yeah. of something. Um, but they also give Avon also gives money to um, Mass General, they give money to small clinics. In, in, a lot of the money that is raised in Boston stays in Boston, and I forget the percentage right off the top, but it's not, it doesn't all, na doesn't all go nationally. A lot of it stays locally. And at closing ceremonies, they actually have people from these various clinics that come and they get these, you know, checks that are as big as that for like $10,000 so that this, you know, clinic in Roxbury can get the, the, the newest mammogram machine or the latest ultrasound mm -hmm. machine or a place that you know delivers food to women in treatment will get you know a check for fifty thousand dollars and uh, you get to see all of that money and stays mm -hmm. locally so it's great so I you know I think that the foundation uh, the Tanner Tata Foundation has a nice balance where we can support that you know the, the research through Genentech Bio and you know the, the bigger picture mm -hmm. but then also we can do the, the little things that make treatment, you know, all that stuff that isn't covered by insurance, but which mm. makes the big difference for people, you know, in treatment. How was um, your insurance, both of you, Barbara? How was yours? Were they supportive? I have, yes, I have very supportive. In fact, they had a nurse, I had my little private nurse calling me every two weeks or so. She just discharged me this week Oh, from um, the service. They, um, just to make sure that I, you know, I was I able to get this service or that service and was everything was, covered did you have a co-pays or oh there's a tremendous amount of co-pays that go along yeah so it's a, it gets expensive <laughs> it does get expensive yeah um and you both went luckily to I was able to afford it but that you could see how some people would not be able to afford those co-pays um but this is the girl in the insurance was kind of um making sure that I had enough and then there was one medicine that we had Pre-chemo, um, Emend was oh, it? Emend with a fifty-dollar copayment. Now, what is that? An anti-nausea medicine. Oh, I think she. That's very that. important. She did take that actually. Did she yeah. get sick? Um, she had been sick, and then we said, "Take Emend." I think that the, the pills are there. It's a three-day regimen, and it's three hundred and fifty dollars for the three days. It's the three pills. I said, "Thank goodness they're pink because it made me. It made it slightly easier to swallow them because they're <laughs> pink." I had a fifty-dollar copay for that. Yes, yeah, so did I. It did, okay. but the but and it said your insurance saved you two hundred and ninety something dollars. Three pills, but yeah, three pills. They were a godsend because yeah. I think it's why I didn't get sick. Uh, yeah, you know, myself. Also. One of the tatas told me, "Don't go to chemo without your emend." So I asked beforehand, and mm. I was there. Yeah. You know, we had had it, but. 
So people with no insurance, I, I did do some research on that. And um, first of all, there's some free mammograms through the Department of Public Health, and we can put that number up as well mm -hmm. um, at the end of the show. But there's also, you can apply for free care in different parts, you know, in Boston hospitals and mm -hmm. things like that. So nobody should not be treated. No, I agree. You know? I agree. It should not be a restricting factor at No, all. and there's a lot of resources these hospitals can dip into, like uh -huh. the, the funding for them. Like mm -hmm. you said, Mass General gets some money and things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, right. So it's ridiculous not, right. not to do that. Mm -hmm. So do they do, does insurances do anything after care? Uh, I was just released this week from this personal, my personal uh, nurse. Yeah. Who was wonderful. I yeah. you know, thanked her up and down because yeah. she was a good support. I luckily didn't need her to I had a few questions, but other than that I was um, I didn't really need her that much. But I th she would be available if I needed her to call you know, I would call her but she won't be calling me every couple mm -hmm. of weeks. Mm -hmm. So um if somebody wanted to do the walk the Avon walk, is it too late for them to... Um... I don't believe it's too late. I, I know that at some point Boston hits its limit on the number of walkers, and I've, I think it's a, I think it's 2,000 walkers are allowed to walk, because after that it just gets to... You know, it's and how much are you enough. supposed to raise? You have to that? raise... Each walker has to raise an $1,800 minimum wow. to, to do the Avon walk. So it's quite a commitment to do, yeah. That is a big commitment. Yeah. How was the walk? Your feet kill you? I mean, I was a runner for so many years, and... Walking something different, yeah. right? What I'm is the mileage? Always, it's 40 miles. It's what's 39 and a half, I think, miles. It's it's a marathon the first day and a half marathon the second day. Saturday's wow. a marathon and Sunday's a half marathon. So, so I hope they have stations along the way to get and They have all kinds of stations. And yeah, food. and they have like you know, yeah, the porta potties, ho joy, and uh, <laughs> which isn't a place for a girl in chemo. So I'm glad I couldn't have done and it last yeah. year anyway. <laughs> No, no business for oncology right. patient being in a porta potty. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, mm -hmm. and it's the fifteenth and sixteenth. You yep. said. Yep. So I'll have my last treatment on May third, and then uh, my oncologist has signed my medical release oh, for right. Avon, and I'm ready to go. Yeah. So did Bob do it with you before the Avon walk, or you just did it yourself? No, I didn't do. I, I haven't done Avon. Oh, walk. you haven't no. done it yet. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I should. Well. Do you want to do it with me? Maybe next year. <laughs> okay. Maybe next year. Yeah. It is a commitment. It's like running a marathon. Yeah. You know, you've got to mentally be ready for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's, it's such a powerful weekend. It's such, you're, you're just carried along emotionally from, you know, right. the, 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 whether it's someone you, you end up talking to. So mm -hmm. why are you walking? Mm -hmm. You know, you do yeah. that every couple of blocks. You'll meet somebody new or you'll see a shirt and says, you know, somebody's buddies or somebody is an angel and you'll be like actually um, you know. I met somebody out the other night just happened to be out at um, a bar recently I mean uh, this past weekend and these two women were chatting we got chatting with them my husband and myself and they the girl asked me to write my name down she's gonna walk in my honor oh she said wasn't that nice that's very I nice I actually forgot about that yeah. um, and she gave me they have a website also Nice. I forget what the name of it is, though, but I have it at home. You know, this th was it's a wonderful night. to see all these women collectively getting together. It's really, really so other. supportive. Now, I just it's met amazing. these women, and what happened was um, my husband and I were sitting next to each other, and the two women were over here. The waitress came from behind and, and said, can I get you gentlemen oh. a drink? Myself. So she basically she thought I was a man. Because <laughs> of the hair. Because of the hair. Yeah. So... These women heard that, so they felt ter you know felt terrible. I got over it, but they felt terrible. So <laughs> then they started attitude. talking, yeah. and then they then they were telling me how that they were signed up to, for the walk and could they have my name, and that's how it started. Oh. Yeah, she thought I was a man, and you know she was all apologies yeah. certainly. At first I was a little upset, but then you know I got over it. You know I said yeah. she's just a kid. It yeah. would be like my kid doing you know? it. Yeah, yeah. So. it's like saying to somebody you. Look Great pregnant and then right, not pregnant. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So through this journey of of getting better, how has it affected you guys emotionally? Do you feel stronger? Do you feel um, you know, a, a new lease on life or or do you appreciate things more or is it too soon to kind of go with those feelings? 
I'll speak for us. Um, I, I definitely wake up every morning like the wolf, the wolf open, open up the shades, the sun's shining, <laughs> whether it's shining or not. I, am, I think that's just me anyways, but mm -hmm. I feel more like that now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you feel vulnerable? That Does it go, ever go through your head? Something else might be happening. I'm just thinking because oh, I know me and I would very, do that. Very, very. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, the first, my first memo since the diagnosis of last June will be this June. So already I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder what that day is going to be like. Yeah. <laughs> so anticipating. But, you know, just kind of one day at a time type of thing. And, geez, I'm glad. I'm glad. I feel great. I feel great. Physically. I know we went cross-country skiing a month and a half ago. Yeah. And you did kept feel up. Great. You were be beating me. I, that, that's what kept me going. I, as soon as I got the okay to go out for a run, I was on tax all then. I went. I said, you sure it's okay? Yep. Go. Go. Do what you want to do. That's awesome. So I think that's what kept me going and get me through it, along with support. I was also I didn't have a group like you guys, but I had, um, you know, at every chemo appointment I had chairs. They had to keep bringing the chairs in, which was great. It was just a great support system. So they have a support group right at BI, though, if you want. They did, to. but I also chose not to be part of that because I felt like that was going to bring me down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I needed to yeah. stay up, and I didn't want to hear anybody. That's what I had trouble with hearing other people's bad stories. I needed people's good stories. Mm, mm. I, d I couldn't hear bad stories while I was going through it. Like bad, bad stories were not good. You know, oh, I had terrible bone pain and oh, I had terrible this, I had terrible that. And I was like, oh goodness, I don't have that now, but do you think I might get it? You know, yeah, I just yeah, always I put one more thought in my head that I might, it, yeah, I might go down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I, did, I chose not to do the support mm. group. I did see the social worker though. Um, Actually, I did most of the talking. She just started <laughs> just sat and listened. So, but you know, I, I, you know, I didn't call her back again. <laughs> you know, everybody yeah. else becomes your social workers. Yeah, and yeah. Support yeah. Group. It's like with any support group. Yeah, my husband's sister was there at every turn. She's she, my she's big nurse, support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you guys were thrilled with BI. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, That's I just okay. recommended them to a, a friend of my mom's who was just diagnosed this week. And I couldn't get on the phone fast enough to give her the phone number for the breast care center at Beth Israel. I, I've been really impressed with them. Yeah, me too. You know, and it, the girls are, you know, the girls, we're, we're kind of all over the place. You know, some of us go to Dana-Farber, some of us go in town, uh, some of us stay out here at Winchester Oncology. And um, it, it, everyone seems to, you know, everyone's doing well. It seems like everyone's getting really good advice. So even if you do stay out in the suburbs, it seems like Winchester's doing a great job by some of these girls. Um, it, it just seems that the treatments are a little bit different. We've noticed that if, you, if you're in Boston, you're more likely to have your surgery up front as opposed to if you stay out in the suburbs, it seems like they're doing the chemo and the radiation first and then surgery yeah, at the like end. Sharon, so it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of different yeah. like that. But, um, but um, yeah, I could, couldn't say enough great things about it. We actually just found out we have the same surgeon, so, and I think oh, she walks funny. on water. I mean, she was, she's Absolutely. amazing. She's amazing. Love her. Yeah, she's love her. great. So how do you feel emotionally now? Do you feel stronger? And yeah, I do. I mean, I, I don't know if... You know, I was ju I just started reading this book about, you know, after breast cancer, you know, and it and says that sometimes when the treatment is over, women can have a really like, oh no, and get, you know, afraid because for the past, you know, 16, 17 months, you know, th my focus has been, you know, whatever the next treatment was, or my focus has been, you know, doing the, the mastectomy exercises, you know, whatever, whatever it is you're supposed to be doing at the time, you have like a job and that's what you're supposed to be doing and everything else may be on hold and this is, you know, your focus is, is getting better. So now that I'm, you know, on the other side or almost there and now that you're better, you know, this is, I guess, a lot of times when women can fall apart. Mm. <laughs> so I'm hoping I don't fall apart because I feel pretty good and I feel I pretty optimistic. Um, you know, of course, it's scary, you know, and there are definitely times... I think more so at the beginning for me that I was afraid. Once I feel like once I started chemo, it was all you know uphill for me. It was, it was tough physically, but emotionally I, I felt like stronger every mm -hmm. time I went to get my medicine. You know, mm. I just felt that way. That's just for me. Stronger as well. I did, yeah. But I know that's not always the case. And you gave a mm -hmm. speech for. Tell me. I, I did. Avon asked me to speak at. Uh,